KSC Presence. 40 rare photos of Jackie Kennedy that reveal what her life was really like. As First Lady of the United States, Jacqueline Lee Kennedy Onassis, born Bouvier, was a tour de force of style, grace and sophistication. Like her husband John F. Kennedy, she brought a sense of youth to the White House, and would become one of the most popular faces of the 20th century. Now, these 40 rare photographs offer a tantalizing glimpse into what life was really like for one of America's most influential first ladies. Jackie Kennedy was only six years old at the time of this photo, but it was an early sign of her lifelong fondness for animals. Indeed, the future first lady had several pooch pals over the course of her 64 years. She hailed from an affluent background, born to Wall Street stockbroker John Verney Black Jack Bouvier III and socialite Janet Norton Lee. Indeed, she enjoyed many privileges in her early life, including ballet and French lessons. Jackie Kennedy first rode a horse at barely a year old, courtesy of her mother. And by 11, she had become a successful equestrian, competing in a number of national championships and scoring a double victory in one. Miss Bouvier achieved a rare distinction, a 1940 New York Times story read. The occasions are few when a young rider wins both horsemanship contests in the same show. Horse riding remained a lifelong passion for Kennedy, but it was in childhood where she flourished. This picture was taken in 1938, when she was just nine years old, at the Piping Rock Horse Show in Locust Valley, New York. A year later, her parents would divorce, marking the beginning of a tough time in the future First Lady's life. In 1951 Kennedy spent the summer traveling around Europe with her sister, Caroline Lee Bouvier. The siblings would later co-author Jackie's only autobiography, One Special Summer, which detailed their adventures. And this photo was snapped at the end of that summer, when the women arrived in the U.S. John F. Kennedy proposed to Jacqueline Bouvier in November 1952, but it wasn't until the following summer that their engagement was officially announced. That June, the betrothed couple vacationed at the Kennedy compound in Hyannisport, Massachusetts and it would become a frequent hub for the pair, with the future president using it as a base for his 1960 campaign. During their summer 1953 vacation at the Kennedy compound, the engaged couple were interviewed by Life magazine. Indeed, they're pictured here during that very same interview. And the story ended up taking the front cover of the July 20th issue, with a strip line, Senator Kennedy goes according. Back in the 1950s, the Kennedys were serious style figures in the U.S. And it wasn't just how they dressed, but how they vacationed too. It's no wonder, then, that their summer trips to the Kennedy compound were of such interest, enough to take the front cover of a magazine, even. Here, the future Mrs. Kennedy inspects photos on the wall of one of the compound's buildings. In 2012 the Edward M. Kennedy Institute for the United States Senate became the lucky recipient of the Kennedy compound's main house. By then, it had seen years of history. Indeed, not only had John F. Kennedy organized his 1960 presidential campaign from there, but his son Ted lived there until 2009. And, of course, it held many happy memories for Jackie, as pictured here. Even after the presidency swept into the lives of the Kennedys, they still managed to enjoy simple pleasures like sailing. And their summer trip to the Kennedy compound in 1953, just before they married, produced plenty of iconic photographs, including this one. Indeed, the pair look absolutely content. Just over three months after announcing their engagement, John and Jacqueline married at a Rhode Island church. And it was quite the event, with around 700 guests attending the ceremony and 1,200 joining the reception. The couple are pictured here on their wedding day, surrounded by the Kennedy family. Unsurprisingly, John and Jackie's wedding was widely considered to be the season's hottest social event. And that status was no doubt elevated by the latter's glamorous ivory wedding dress, which can be seen in all its glory here. The dress itself was the work of Enlo, a high society fashion designer, 
and it's now stored at the Kennedy Library in Massachusetts. After their wedding, Jackie and John traveled to Acapulco, Mexico, for their honeymoon. Eventually, they moved into their new home in Hickory Hill, located in the Washington, D.C. suburb of McLean, Virginia. In this picture, however, the pair are pictured fiddling with a camera outside their home in Hyannis Port. Meanwhile, in the first few years of their marriage, the John and Jackie faced multiple hardships. Indeed, those early times weren't easy for the pair. John, for instance, was blighted by Addison's disease, a condition affecting the adrenal glands. And he was also troubled by back pain stemming from an injury received while in service. In 1954 John even underwent spinal surgery that nearly proved fatal. In fact, John's operation in 1954 wasn't his first. Over the course of his life, he underwent four different procedures to alleviate his back problems, including a particularly risky one in 1944. But it was the 1954 operation that took the biggest toll on the future president. Indeed, Complications from a resulting urinary tract infection were so serious that John was even read his last rites. In 1957 Jackie gave birth to a daughter, Caroline. But it wasn't the first time the couple had tried for a baby. Indeed, two years earlier, the future first lady had suffered a miscarriage. Meanwhile, in 1956 her daughter Arabella arrived tragically stillborn. Caroline however, was happy and healthy, and the pair posed with her on the cover of Life magazine in 1958. On November 8, 1960, John secured the presidency with a slender victory over Richard Nixon. And a fortnight later, Jackie gave birth to their son, John F. Kennedy Jr. Unsurprisingly, the press focused heavily on the incoming First Lady's period of postpartum depression following the birth. Meanwhile, this picture was taken on December 10, when Kennedy Jr. was just 15 days old. One of Jackie's earliest White House meetings took place in February 1961, in the diplomatic reception room. As seen in this archived photograph, the 35th First Lady of the United States was meeting with young representatives from the American Heart Association Fund Drive, twin girls Debbie and Donna Horst. Remember Alan Shepard? Yes, he may not be a household name like Neil Armstrong or Buzz Aldrin, but the astronaut in fact became the first American in space, in May 1961. And yet, he wasn't the first human to make it, that accolade went to Russian Yuri Gagarin a month earlier, in the Soviets' first space race victory. Still, the Kennedys watched Shepard on his mission all the same. In 1961 the newly elected President Kennedy headed for his first official visit to Europe. His wife joined him, of course, but also added an extra stop on her trip, a tour of the Greek islands. Here, she can be seen boarding a flight to Athens at a London airport, alongside her sister, Lee Radjewill. During the First Lady's solo trip to Greece, Kennedy apparently ordered her to be kept away from multi-millionaire Aristotle Onassis. That's according to Secret Service agent Clint Hill, who claimed as much in a book published in 2016. The president was apparently worried about Onassis' womanizing ways, but the pair were kept apart on that particular trip. In 1928 American art collector Charles Lozer died, and left an original Paul Cezanne painting to Calvin Coolidge, then President of the United States and House on the Marne still hung in the White House when Jackie arrived 33 years later. Here, the First Lady can be seen admiring Suzanne's work alongside Paul's granddaughter Philippa Kelman. Just because you're the President of the United States, it doesn't mean you can't take a vacation. And here, the Kennedy family can be seen in Hammersmith Farm in Rhode Island, in September 1961. It was a working holiday for John who named a new head of the CIA during the trip. But he still found time to relax with Jackie and the kids, as this photo proves. One of Jackie's political duties in her first year in the White House included a visit to the Washington, D.C. Children's Hospital. It's not difficult to see why she was so widely respected. Indeed, after her trip to Europe that summer, 
One of the president's advisors told her, once in a great while, an individual will capture the imagination of people all over the world. You have done this. From her very first day at the White House, Jackie Kennedy took it upon herself to re-establish the building's historical character. Indeed, she stripped out the unremarkable furniture and replaced it with antique furnishings. And by Christmas 1961 she had made sweeping changes to the way the White House's furnishings were handled. There's nothing like a snowfall to make an ordinary scene look magical. Of course, when the White House is involved, it's not exactly an ordinary scene to begin with. But this rare picture of Jackie riding in an open sleigh along the South Lawn is something really special. What's more, the sleigh is being pulled by Caroline Kennedy's pony, Macaroni. Jackie may not have drawn crowds like Queen Elizabeth II or President Dwight Eisenhower when the latter visited India in 1962, but her presence was undoubtedly felt. She took the trip at the suggestion of John Kenneth Galbraith, the U.S. ambassador to India, and visited Pakistan along the way. The visit was well documented by photojournalists, including this idyllic shot. As First Lady of the United States, Jackie had plenty of formal duties to complete. In 1962 for instance, she hosted Iranian Empress Farah Pahlavi at the White House. In this picture, Jackie can be seen introducing her son, John F. Kennedy Jr., to Farah. And yes, that's the Kennedy pony, Macaroni, in the background. Jackie didn't stop being a style icon when she entered the White House, as these images prove. At only 31 years old when she became First Lady, her youth and beauty captivated a nation. And she looks ever glamorous at this April 1962 dinner in Washington, D.C., held to honor the winners of the Nobel Prize. In this stunning color photograph taken in September 1962, the President and First Lady of the United States watch on as sailing yachts race for the America's Cup. That year was a notable one for the competition, marking the first time the challengers had not come from Canada or Britain. Meanwhile, the Australian syndicate ultimately lost, but it ran a close race. The First Lady was happy to introduce her kids to horse riding, as her mom Janette Bouvier had done with her. Indeed, equestrianism was one of the former's lifelong interests, so it made sense that she continued to ride into adulthood. Straddling a horse with her in this November 1962 photo is John Jr., while her daughter Caroline rides on her own. John F. Kennedy's final Christmas in 1962 looked like a merry one, if this picture is anything to go by. Indeed, he and Jackie were surrounded by their family, including Jackie's sister Lee Rajewill and her husband and children. And it all took place in a White House that the First Lady had spent months restoring, Jackie's sister Caroline went by her middle name, Lee, practically from birth. And by 1959 she had entered into her second marriage, this time to Prince Stanislaw Albrecht Radziwill, a Polish aristocrat. Here, she stands outside the White House with the First Lady, and her daughter, Kennedy's niece, Anna Christina Radziwill in 1963. On November 22, 1963, John F. Kennedy traveled to Dallas, Texas, for a presidential visit. The trip was arranged to smooth tensions between local political figures and Democratic Party members, as well as launch Kennedy's re-election campaign. But while riding through Dealey Plaza, the president was shot and killed by Lee Harvey Oswald, a former U.S. Marine. Jackie was by his side at the time, as pictured here. Just 128 minutes after Lee shot John dead, Jackie was aboard Air Force One. There, she was seen standing beside Lyndon B. Johnson to witness him being sworn in as the 36th President of the United States. The swift transition was made partly due to concerns over Johnson's own safety, and his desire to provide the nation with some sense of order after such a shocking event. John's funeral took place over the following three days. His body was flown back to Washington, D.C. Then, his coffin was taken to the Capitol building, where thousands gathered to pay their respects ahead of the state funeral. In this rare picture, Jackie and her family can be seen leaving the ceremony on November 25th.
Meanwhile, in the years following her husband John's death, life for Jackie had to go on. However, she mostly vanished from the public eye in 1964, seeking privacy for herself and her children. A few rare photos of the former first lady in this period do exist, though, such as this one taken a few years later in 1967, where she is seen attending the opera at New York City's Lincoln Center. Four and a half years after her husband's death, Jackie attended the funeral of Martin Luther King, Jr. However, she had been reluctant to go at all, as she felt wary of large crowds. And, of course, it was still a painful reminder of John's death. Nevertheless, she made the trip to Georgia. By 1968 Jackie had remarried, this time to her old friend Aristotle Onassis. At that point in her life, she apparently wanted privacy and security, two things her new husband, a wealthy shipping tycoon from Greece, could provide. And while the marriage brought controversy upon Jackie, she wasn't afraid to be seen in public with him. This photo, for instance, was taken outside a nightclub in Athens around her 40th birthday. Jackie's passion for horse riding continued as she went into her 40s, as this 1970 photo indicates. In fact, the former first lady continued to ride horses for almost her entire life. For instance, 20 years after the above photo was taken, and just a few years before her death in 1994, she participated in the Orange County Hunt. You may not know it, but Jackie smoked three packs of cigarettes a day for more than four decades. But only those who knew her personally were really aware. That's because she controlled her image as First Lady precisely, rarely being photographed smoking. But this picture was taken in 1970, long after she had left the White House. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe.